Dear friends, welcome. In class, I replied to a question from my students about reincarnation and Taoism. It is a hot question for many people and I don't want to repeat myself exactly, but I promised to say something more about it. So I thought about making this topic. And this is a topic based on something in the Cloud Cover, which is a summary of the Tao song. And uh, I promise you it's going to be very interesting. And it is also going to be a little bit of a curiosity. It is part of uh, what you do in the Taoist uh, bachelor Taoist medicine but I think you'll find it interesting because it highlights some topics which you might find strange or weird or maybe impossible but they are part of another culture and this other culture wants to understand the world in a very different way than what we do in the West if you look at Western hospitals Western medicine you can see that the idea of Western medicine is to get people back to work because our society is all about work about money and so on and uh, when people are going back to work they have to be made suitable to do this work and otherwise sure we have the compassion to let them live but we do not really have the science to make them better in general uh, exceptions of course are there the idea of medicine is a little bit one of life is hopeless so as a result of that you cannot expect to become better but you might at least have the idea that your life continues until you die. For Taoism that's different, for Chinese medicine in general that's different. And it is a pity that nobody talks about it anymore. And mind you the wind, I hope uh, the voice is going to be clear. I have a script and I'm going to keep it on my lap as a reference and I will sometimes need my glasses to be able to see what I'm saying. My handwriting is, as you might see, not the most clear handwriting, a spy handwriting, so that nobody can understand what I'm saying. I feel a little bit like Swedenborg sometimes, uh, who was crazy, by the way, and he wrote books full of just unreadable scripts, so nobody really knows what he wrote about. Anyway, let's start with this. We doubt in our life, in general, if we would like to live or if we would prefer to die. I guess you can agree with that. Uh, give a note below if you do agree with it actually because that is the problem that Taoism tries to solve to a large degree it's about this choice between wanting to live or wanting to die uh, a lot of people they go through hardships in life and they feel that life isn't kind to them and they feel punished and they feel all kind of things so they try to hold on to all kind of uh, support that makes them feel better about themselves uh, even though they know it is not going to work and it is not going to resolve the paradox of life. Yeah, let's call it the paradox of life. I think that is a good one. It is because of the doubt actually that our mind, our behavior, our physical constitution, everything like that is continuously uh, struggling with itself. There is no foundation within our behavior, our mind and our body to find unification. Theories like uh, ergo cogito sum, I think so, therefore I am, and the split between mind and body, or the want to unify mind and body, uh, these kind of things are only possible because of that inherent doubt about things. So our Western philosophy is about that doubt just as much as the Taoist is. In the West, of course, we try to solve that first through Christianity and trying to pray for mercy. And in the East, they have similar kind of movements, so don't worry, they are there too. Uh, like also in Islam, in Africa, in the Americas, in Australia. The main goal of Taoism and Confucianism is to create a sort of rationality, a science of life so that we can escape the things that we are hurting from or hurting through. Yeah, it's difficult. I prefer usually to skip these kind of topics because, well, they make me think too. The thing is, this unification thing is an important thing. When we are not able to unify these three factors, then at that moment there is something that Taoism calls the three worms, uh, which at that moment take over, which actually take over from you, for you already for a long time, uh, basically from when you were born, and their only aim is to destroy you. So they take for that a long time, but they make you do all the things that you know of that they are not good. Uh, we're going to talk about the worms later a little bit more in this same video 
so wait if this is something that interests you. Uh, but these are called the killer worms, they're also called the insects or the bugs that are living inside you. I heard a Taoist, Western Taoist once say, yeah, but these are gods and you have to worship them. I mean, that's the reverse of what all the Taoist classics say. So let's not think about these kind of things. We are all moved by our faith. Our faith is basically to go die. And at the moment when we learn about Tao, and we learn how to handle life as a whole, we create a destiny. And this destiny is basically to live. So at the moment when we are living, we fulfill our destiny. When we are moved towards death, that means that we are lived by fate. I, I do translation work, as you might have already noticed from several of the movies that I have been making so far this year. And I started with that uh, about a year ago to do this actively. I promised when I was in Chingshan Mountains a long time ago to do this. I talked it over with my Sifu in the Wudang Mountains. And I talked about it with uh, Taoists in Beijing and other places in the Wudang Mountains. And everybody agrees about the fact that Chinese is like a holy language. Uh, that is what Tibetans say and that is what the Japanese say. And things can only be understood in their own language. And this is really a problem with uh, translation. So they think you should learn Chinese. But the problem is when you learn Chinese, you never learn to speak and think Chinese like how the Chinese do. So that actually is not a valid point. The Tibetans, they took a long time, but they translated a lot of things from Sanskrit and from Chinese into Tibetan language and they also in the process made some changes I'm pretty sure because people keep on thinking and in the same way when I translate I probably make some changes too because uh, in the end you can't really escape who you are where you come from and the only thing is that we can try to emulate as much as possible whatever this comes from all and when we talk here about uh, the cloud cover which is the summary of the Tao Tang compiled by the same author as the Dao Tsang was compiled with in the Ming Dynasty. At some point in one of the texts, number 35, uh, it talks about uh, auxiliary techniques to self-cultivation. And one of the things it says that Taoists should not eat salt. Uh, because salt, even though it's good for the kidneys, it also causes harm to the lungs. And as a result of that, the lungs, the lung chi is going to be damaged and we're going to feel grief when the chi is less. So when we reduce the chi of our body, we're going to feel grief. And that grief is like what happens in the autumn, when we saw, start noticing that life is draining away and eventually uh, that saltiness of life is then eventually going to become the winter. So for ourselves also, death in that sense and the grief and the saltiness of life is, according to this technique, seen as a taboo, worthy a taboo uh, to not eat salt. Uh, the taboo is of course from eating salt. When I was young and I had very active kidney disease after I was operated and considered good enough to go back home from the hospital, they told me better not eat too much salt because your kidneys will likely put it into kidney stones. So even though salt is good to dry up your intestines and it is good to motivate your kidneys to do the thing that they're supposed to do, uh, too much of course is never good but for Taoists salt is a no-go so when I came to live in the Wuda mountains I was surprised everywhere where I go in monastic communities nobody ate any salt and as a result of that because of not understanding how to live differently because of eating not eating salt I started dehydrating and I got into some really serious problems and I had to go into the hospital to be rehydrated and then of course you're being rehydrated with salt you feel much better and then you realize like, oh, okay, something's going on. But it took me a long time to realize that, that not eating salt is actually a thing. I'd say this for a few reasons, not because of the salt, because that story is just an illustration of something that happened to me and which showed how many thoughts there are in Taoism which are actually relevant. And the grief in itself, this is the relevant part. Let's get back to the three worms. The three worms, I'm not going to call them by name or anything like that, but these three worms, they live into your Dantian. They live inside your Dantian. You have three Dantian, as you know. And these, in these three Dantians, they're worms. They live there and they are trying to do harm to you. These worms, they have to become killed. So you have to get rid of them so that the three pure ones can live there. The three pure ones, by nature, they live for you, your three pure ones. They live inside the Big Dipper. And the point is, that gradually, because of the purification of your body, a word that I always try to avoid because in the West, purification 
is seen as becoming chemically free. Uh, that is for Taoism not important. It is actually meaning becoming free of your destructive habits. Because these three worms, they each have a category of things that they prey on and that they stimulate in you. For instance, maybe you enjoy sex, maybe you enjoy porn, uh, maybe you enjoy desiring things. Uh, these kind of things, they are regulated by the worm in the upper dantian, the mud ball, so to say. And at the moment, when you give in to these things, uh, then at that moment this worm grows in power over you. And as a result of that, you become damaged. And this is why in Taoism they have a very Puritan vision about how you should deal with sexuality. They're not against sexuality, but they put it into a ritualized context to make sure that it is part of getting better. We get back to that too. The middle dantian, this is where everybody always feels all the love or everything. This is basically what it preys on. It actually feeds on the desires for nice foods and nice company and for love and for being appreciated and being uh, seen as important to other people. This is always very hard and tough to say, but Taoism doesn't care about these things. So in Taoism they say, better not do that because these worms, they prey on your desires for appreciation and validation. At the moment when you can let go of it, you can let go of all your affirmations, you can let go of all your self-confirmation about how wonderful you actually are and how spontaneous and how hysterically funny you are. And at that moment, life might not be exciting, but at least the worms do not have power over you. And it's a little bit of a balancing course, because of course you have to have kindness and you have to have all the right kind of feelings for people. And it is a long learning process and there is a different kind of love coming about when you are actually abiding by these rules. Uh, but your desire for nice foods is going to go away. We have a food module for this purpose uh, because then you learn to appreciate food for the mastery that you can have over it and how it can help you and become a teacher for you because of the way how you can understand food. It's the foundation of Chinese medicine, herbal medicine especially. That is not present in modern TCM, but it is the foundation of Chinese medicine is to understand what food does to you and as a result of that use it to improve the quality of your body. Then in the lower Dantian, this one likes fashion, it likes beauty, it likes all kind of nice things. That's why the Lao Tzu and the Tao Te Ching also talks about these kind of things. Uh, when your lower worm is having rule over you, you are going to be moved by the beauty of all kind of things. This is also why in Taoism they do appreciate beauty in the context of Feng Shui, but not beauty in the context of beauty for beauty. In modern art, Actually, there are some trends in the past hundred years where you can see that the meaning of the feelings is more important than the beauty of the feelings or the beauty of the manifestation of the feelings. So in that sense, there are some aspects of Western society which are like that. Wearing fashionable clothes, beautiful clothes, uh, creating an uh, affectionate image of yourself in the eye of your surroundings. Uh, or in your own eye, in the mirror, your vanity, so to say. These kind of things, they feed this worm and therefore also uh, eventually will make you disappointed. I do rejuvenation treatments with acupuncture and I do help people to get younger and to get a better grip on life as a whole. I do not tell people that they're going to become more beautiful, they're going to become more young and more vital. That's a very important difference. And this difference is important to understand, to be able to say, this is not vanity, this is actually medicine. But you can't get it from the insurance because it is beauty treatment. There is no stretch in that context within the eye of insurance companies. It's medicine when they say it's medicine, it is vanity when they say it's vanity and they are hard on that. Just as Taoism is hard on that in a similar kind of fashion. The trick is to escape from the grip of these three worms on your life. At the moment when you can't do that, then at that moment uh, you will automatically start feeling much better. And this much better uh, comes about from finding emptiness inside you, stillness, calmness. What we find in meditation, what we look for in meditation is to try to find calmness first so that we can start restoring the jing, the qi and so on in our body. And as a result of the way how we can carry our body through the jing, and how we can perfect our movements so that they bring life and that we can uh, 
uh, develop the shun so that we can even reach out of the body with it so that we can capture the lean and bring that back into our body and integrate it with ourselves so that we become numinous and we can start looking inside ourselves in a helpful way uh, that can actually help us discern between what is good and what is bad, what is damaging and what is bringing life. Taoism and Buddhism both believe in reincarnation. Uh, it's undoubt uh, there's no doubt about the fact that it is like that. Zhuang Tzu mentioned uh, about all the different kind of things you can do for spiritual development or personal development. Reincarnation is one of the things. Uh, but he said it is of minor concern uh, for the simple reason that incarnation doesn't guarantee a better life because you could incarnate as an animal or you can incarnate as an insect depending on which desires you are following so you're going to go back down on the ladder of development in your incarnations in buddhism the idea was that you would go up on a ladder and eventually become a lama and from a lama become a more enlightened lama and from the enlightened lama can become a buddha after you have been a bodhisattva for some time for Buddhism and Taoism, enlightenment both is very important because enlight but enlightenment in Buddhism is seen as a endpoint, while in Taoism, enlightenment is seen as a stepping stone towards immortality. Enlightenment is required. Reincarnation does exist within Taoism, to be short on that, but there is a next step after that, and that next step is the immortality stage. And this is actually what is important. This is the root of Chinese medicine. First, get better by finding enlightenment, then become an immortal so you can't find enlightenment by just meditating on things but you have to meditate in such a way that your body your mind your behavior uh, everything becomes enlightened so these things have to become unified which is called Tai greater unity at the moment when you find enlightenment you are also in the process of killing off the three worms because once you find enlightenment it's easier to discipline yourself to do the right thing and to let go of your bad habits when you can let go of your bad habits and at that moment the three worms don't have a place and they die and they die in different times the first worm dies after three months and the second worm after seven, six months and the third worm dies after nine months and uh, each of these worms they need their time to be killed but the three pure ones can enter your body the three pure ones will never successfully enter your body at the moment when the worms are there still the worms and the pure ones they are like not enemies, but they are like matter and antimatter. Yes, the one is going to be victorious over the other. I think personally, from my experience, if the three worms are there and the three pure ones come in, the three pure ones just dissipate. They don't really hold on inside you. You can make some contact with them, but they cannot stay in your body. So this is a bit of, a bit of an issue because the three worms continuously push you to behavior which is going to be counterproductive to help them settle in your body and as a result of that all the different kind of spirits that are also living in your body which are living in your bones and in your joints and in your muscles and so on they all are going to be hindered in doing the right thing because all these things they work together and they are part of the memories uh, on which you base your progress and if your memories are negatively polarized you're going to have doubts and because you're having doubts it's not that you're going to have faith in that you are going to die per se because you hope it's going to be away as long as possible but the thing is just that it is there and so you can see that for Taoism reincarnation is like a sort of escape a lower form of immortality and it is possible so this is also the relationship between Buddhism and Taoism in that sense uh, Taoism sees Buddhism as valid very valid but it also says okay it's just a stepping stone people have to go through that process to get there and then uh, becoming a Buddha is valid too, of course, but it is not the same as immortality. It has a different kind of state of existence. It doesn't mean that it isn't valuable, it is just a different state. Okay, then the problem of enlightenment. Nobody really knows what is enlightenment. Yes, uh, let's be very clear about it. There's a lot of different kind of theories, but the experience of enlightenment, what is it actually all about? I hear a lot of people say all kinds of things, uh, from literally being light inside yourself to super knowledge or higher knowledge or whatever kind of things. That is not the case because for this higher knowledge that you see everybody seek in a meditation they have to get into bliss and bliss is what feeds the worms so that is not the solution uh, i'm really sorry if that is your thing with ordinary people both our mind our body our behavior everything is run by confusion we are confused by nature and because of this confusion uh, we continuously make errors of judgment uh, er because of this state we continuously make erroneous judgments and as a result of that we maintain our habits with a sort of permission like 
Uh, some people, they say, oh, okay, I want to do all these kind of things, but I don't want to give up drinking. I don't want to give up drugs. Well, in that case, up to you. But the end goal is not completely reached. It's simply just not possible. Uh, it might by accident happen. I don't know why. Uh, but the reality is that most likely that's not going to happen. You cannot be a meditation master and drink beer or wine. Uh, you can say, but this is really great wine because it is this very pure wine, I make it myself. No, it's the same like eating meat. Uh, like I met once this macrobiotic master, he says, I can eat meat and still be a macrobiotic because I kill the rabbit myself. And as a result of it, when I eat it, it's my responsibility. I can carry that responsibility and still be a macrobiotic person. The thing is that whenever you think it is your mental opinions and your theoretical frameworks that are bringing you to this enlightenment, then the technology is always going to end up into the dark. Um, of course, in my movies, in my classes, I talk a lot about different kind of theories. I do not say that they are the truth. They are theories through which you can work and figure things out. Uh, they are not an absolute thing, like in physics or uh, in quantum mechanics or in modern biology. It is not like this is how it is and there is no other way. Genetics, I don't believe in genetics. Gen genes are there, but your behavior through epigenetics uh, is influencing your genes all the time. So these genes are not that important. There is a lot of doubt about if genes actually really do anything except on the local level. Uh, so that is also very different. In Taoism, we usually say that enlightenment is the ability to overcome what is called the eight obstacles. And the eight obstacles, we have to talk about it in another movie because it's going to be too long to discuss that in this movie. And then we are going to be making a movie of two hours of which I know that maybe only two people will ever watch that. And uh, that makes no sense. Um, the idea is to help you on your way to get to understand these things and to get to the point where you actually get serious about practice and where you are going to be able to experiment and maybe not give up things yet, yes, but where you understand that eventually you have to get to the point where you have to give up. You do not need to give up before you get to that point, that you start. No, you should start and then gradually grow towards the giving up of the things which are bad for you. That's just how it is. When you come across something, you're ready for it because it is already there. And now you're watching this video, you're ready for what I'm saying. So do something with it. That's the most important part. Uh, you can even make a comment and say, I'm a liar, I'm a fantasy person, I am uh, nobody, uh, whatever, just react uh, to make sure that you get a thinking process going. Because that's all what it is. It's a thinking process and it is a process of feeling and of learning how to act and change your behavior. And do not think that I don't struggle with all my own bad behaviors too. Everybody does their whole life long. There's no change. And if you do good behavior for a while, you think like, now I've got it. I know from people who I thought now they've got it, but then after some time they gradually fell back and the three worms they come back to you, for instance, by eating grains, like eating bread, rice, uh, corn and so on and so forth. All these kind of things, they have the seeds of aging and death inside and they bring these three worms inside you according to Taoism. The thing is, our habits, they cause us to become weak and this weakness lowers our level of Qi. It actually kills off our Yuan Qi and because of the reduction of Yuan Qi and the reduction of Qi in general, uh, we are becoming overheated, create dampness in our life and because the Qi eventually becoming less and less and less, we create phlegm. And this phlegm is stagnating our body in so many places, in so many through so many problems, that eventually we are going to die as a result of that. So phlegm is the worst to come across. When we are saying like, okay, I want to become an immortal. What we are doing mostly is trying to overcome these eight hindrances and then be ready for the next stage. So by the time you're ready for the eight uh, hindrances, you have overcome them. And at that moment, you are also ready to become an immortal because you have achieved enlightenment. In Buddhism, they talk about the eight, uh, eight wheeled path or something like this, uh, the eight spoked wheel of the karma. Uh, in fact, in uh, Taoism, of course, these eight directions are very similar. You need to overcome these obstructions and they're not as difficult as you think. They just all take a lot of discipline and through this discipline you come to understand why they are important and that is what is called enlightenment within Taoism. In the end all the methods they are just means, right? They are just means. They are not very important in the sense that they have absolute truth. There's no such thing as a best way to do things. Uh, although it helps to have a teacher that brings you along the way. Uh, not having a teacher is actually one of the eight hindrances. 
It doesn't mean that you can't overcome it without a teacher, but it is a lot more difficult. And once you are overcoming these things, you start understanding how a teacher could have helped you uh, to do this sooner. That's just how it is. Many people, they practice things like Qigong, Tai Chi Chuan and so on for their health. And that is valuable, but I always say, I already say this for 30 years, I say health is a side effect of your practice. It is not the purpose of your practice. When you think you can do medical Qigong and get better, or medical yoga and get better, that means you are misguided. That's the best word. Because you do not get better from exercises, you become better because you become you come closer to your enlightenment and as a result that you learn to overcome obstacles um, like in my case i overcome my kidney disease doesn't mean that i'm not going to die from kidney disease because that could still happen but uh, i have overcome it and i have managed to survive myself for a long time so that is something that you can call a merit which brings me close to enlightenment because i come to understand why that means there are still other kidney, kidney diseases which can get me on that still vulnerable place so there you go within the Taoist vision your body is called the dharma realm so overcoming these obstacles have to do with following the dharma your personal dharma so your personal circumstances are what it is that is also why a teacher can never give you exactly an answer to your problems they can never give you exactly a method that's going to work for you uh, you're going to have to find out how things work when i look at the Taoist program yes sure there are all kind of practices in there which can help you overcome most of the obstacles but your individual unique circumstance will make that it will become different but you first have to fulfill the qualifications that the exercises create so that you actually learn what the exercises can teach you and then you can go with that first you have to be shaped by the exercises so that you create the right circumstances to adapt things for your personal environment for your personal needs because you understand the exercises and you understand the underlying theory and so on and so on well if you go adapt them before you get to that point and don't fool yourself by thinking that you do or know everything then at that moment when you do that you are actually avoiding making any progress because an exercise is not there to be adapted by you but it has to adapt you and if you are adapting an exercise to make it more comfortable for you then at that moment you are no longer having any benefit from these exercises so then if you exercise or you don't exercise it doesn't really make any difference so all the difficulties you experience in these exercises these are the challenges that you have to overcome and these challenges are in fact the whole purpose of doing the exercises if you go adapt the exercises to your needs that you think are your needs then at that moment it doesn't work anymore it's the same like when you go meditate to become enlightened but you don't become a better person then at that moment when you reach enlightenment and you become you can incarnate then at that moment what are you going to incarnate with because you are going to come back into the same circumstances of this life or worse because you haven't learned anything that can never be the purpose of practice uh, you have to become better and this better is not just in becoming more smart but in just finding this enlightenment or get closer to it so I hope this idea about enlightenment and about reincarnation, which is the topic of this movie, actually makes things clear. Reincarnation is important. It is something that you have to have on the side to make sure that you get to the point. Um, we do reincarnation in many different kind of ways, by having children, uh, by cloning sometimes, by uh, building things which uh, look like us, by painting, uh, of course, also by transferring our mind into a untrained child, which is like a blank slate. That is a technique that's being used, still being used nowadays. And also by dying, taking the consciousness principle of this life and going towards a new life. In Chinese folk religion, they say everybody goes to hell. When you die, you go to hell, no problem. And then, then you get punished and then you reincarnate, uh, but you forget everything from the hell and you forget everything from your previous life. So you don't remember anything in your next life. The thing is, you want to incarnate like in Monopoly, you want to pass by the prison and you want to go directly to start. So this is how you summarize the path to enlightenment as a monopoly game. I hope this was very enlightening to you and I look forward to see you in the next movie. I think it was a tough topic to talk about uh, because it makes me look as if I try to be a spiritual teacher. I just try to explain techniques. That's how it is. I try to be a good teacher. Um, 
I do not believe that talking spiritually is going to help anybody. As soon as somebody talks spirituality, usually they elevate themselves above the average, even though maybe the topic is very interesting. I don't mean to give you hope, I mean to give you attention to what is actually the solution that you have to go through and how you have to change your habits so that you can actually achieve something and then hopefully learn the right kind of things that actually bring you to that next stage and bring you to a form of immortality or becoming a Buddha. It doesn't matter. Thank you very much.